Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us tonight for uh, Wednesday night's uh, weeknight conference. Um, my topic, as you see, approaching magic with a growth mindset as a player, as a judge, and as a community as well. Um, so a little bit of introduction of myself. Um, my name is Garrison Fote. I'm level two from Cookville, Tennessee. Um, though also, uh, I lived in San Diego from 2015 to 2017. Um, that was, I started for L1 right before I moved to San Diego. I was living in Ohio at the time, got certified, moved to San Diego, wasn't sure if I'd ever get a play or judge magic again, but ended up finding a really great community, a really great group of friends, and made a lot of my progress where I was trying to make the jump from L1 to L2 and starting to work events for real during that time when I was in San Diego. I uh, didn't quite get to L2 until after I moved down here to Tennessee, but uh, yeah, some uh, PPTQs and IQs uh, at ease games were some of my first events working as a judge, and those were a lot of good time. Um, so today's presentation, uh, like I said, is focused on a growth mindset. Uh, growth by itself, you know, has a certain definition and, you know, Slideshow 101 type thing will sort of break down the definition of matter of growth right here. Uh, so the process of increasing in amount, value, or importance. So we're going to break growth into those three categories and sort of focus on how those three categories individually are going to be available or be a focus, whether that's for the players, whether that's for us as judges, or whether that's for the community itself of how they, how they focus on growing in those ways and how they measure their growth in those different ways before we sort of start to focus on the growth mindset itself. Um, another definition in the Oxford Dictionary is also the increase in economic value or activity. And when we think about our LGSs and Watsi, that's something they definitely care about as well. You know, they are businesses, they wanna make money. If they're not making money, if they're not having people buy packs and play their game, then we don't have players to judge and we don't have a chance to do what we like to do as judges. So it's always great to, while we are not salespeople for the game, by making the game more um, having a greater amount or having more value put in the game or more importance put in the game and growing the game as a whole, we're going to lead to more opportunities for ourselves to be judges as well. So that economic growth is also important for us indirectly. So I want us to think about for the growth for players, um, you know, for all of us, we probably started as players of the game when we first started playing Magic. So if we're going to think about amount, what are some ways and, you know, feel free to type in Discord over the course of these several slides as we're sort of discussing these different things. But what is a way or ways that players might measure the amount when it comes to their growth? Or what is something they, uh, what metric might they use to determine whether they're growing in the amount uh, that they're a player? So wins, quantity of cards, so increasing their collection, the amount of fun they have, um, going to big tournaments and quality of cards. Um, so quality might be just like shininess or like more expensive cards and things like that. Um, mistakes, experience, rules, knowledge, how often they play. Um, so yeah, and those are all great things. For amount, sort of like frequency of events might be the first thing that we go in if we're just talking about the amount itself. Um, but then the second one is value. So what is sort of maybe the value that players are getting out of from coming to events? And all these answers are correct. These are just sort of, the answers that will pop up on the screen are just sort of what I zeroed in on. So the value, they're, you know, they're earning prizes, they're making friends, um, they're increasing the secondary market value of their collection and social interactions, um, building the community around them. And um, as many people said earlier, like you have all made connections within playing the game as well. And in terms of this, yeah, we have uh, play skill being a big one. In addition to all those answers as well, in terms of the Purdue, um, Zachary, yep, don't ask flow too many things. Um, yeah, so play skill being a big thing for growth. 
Um, but as well, just like people said, like some people might be valuing their collection is growing or their community and their friendships is growing, being a really big value that they get from playing the game. And then finally, importance uh, for this one, sort of like notoriety or just sort of like um, prestige is something. And for this one, um, sort of two things I uh, sort of discussed or thought about were like event prestige, um, sort of thinking about like if amount is the amount of events they play in. For importance, we might think about, oh, are they graduating from pre-release to PPTQ to qualifying for an invitational? And then as we get, you know, to the pro tour and worlds coming back soon and things like that, um, getting to larger and bigger events and then uh, the all important Twitter cloud, of course, as well. I mean, if you don't have, you know, 2000 followers, you know, can you consider yourself a real magic grinder? Um, Yes, and this was created before Elon owned Twitter, but um, in terms of Twitter cloud, it just seems to be a thing that um, sometimes players focus on a lot. So how do players grow? Um, so once again, type in Discord if you would, but like, what are the things that players do to grow? Whether that's um, what they do to become better players, what they do to increase their collection size, increase their player base, increase the frequency of events, what are the things that they're doing to become a growing as a player? We're getting play tests, playing more often, um, deck building, playing with more experienced players and talking, talk about their plays after the game, not just playing the game itself, but really breaking down what they're doing and um, making sure to review what they're doing. Um, engage in MTG content. They're engaging and researching and networking in different ways online. Um, spending time reading magic content, what are the plays, and trading their cards, just trying to prove that value as well. So, um, and a lot of this for this particular slide, I was thinking sort of about player skill mostly as I was putting together my list of things. But yeah, they're, they're playing in their events. They're, you know, getting to test their skills and see what results they earn from playing in those events. They're reading articles, they're watching streams, they're listening to podcasts, they're asking questions um, to players that they play against to uh, debrief their plays or asking questions to people they trust in their community. Um, creating content, uh, they're play testing with people, you know, getting reps in even when there's nothing on the line and just doing it as much as possible. Doing reps online, you know, Arena and Moto. Um, you know, a lot of serious players will be able to get more reps in online than having to drive to their store and play an F and M sometimes. And maybe that's the way they grow. Um, developing testing groups and reviewing past matches as well. So as judges, while players, you know, when you think about the ways that they grow and the things that they're focused on when they're growing, the frequency of events they play in, their play skill, their prestige, and their Twitter clout sometimes. Let's focus on us as judges and what are some of the things that, what are we focused on when we're measuring our own growth and the amount of growth that we are hoping to achieve? <laughs> so judging more stuff, if we're thinking specifically about amount, um, but making more rulings and our ruling accuracy, getting to mentor and have an effect on more judges, conferences, taking more judge calls at events, spending more time with judges, increasing our level uh, to more not notable levels, attending conferences and studying, talking to more judges. Um, so yeah, for amount, really um, networking, uh, frequency of events worked, just being at more events, taking more calls, interacting with more players and other judges is sort of how we grow in amount or see that growth in our amount. And as we improve in our skill, we'll be hopefully put on staff for more events and be able to attend more events as well. Um, oh, and spreading, uh, joining online groups as well because uh, partially due to just geographic constraints that it's not always gonna be the actual physical events that we're able to get value from or increase our value expression. Um, so then for value as well, um, this, I've got several categories. So if we think about as amount of being the frequency of events we worked and the ways or the amount of frequency that we interact with the players and the rest of the community, what are some of the things that as judges, we focusing on increasing our value of what we're bringing to the community? What are some of the things that we are getting better at all the time 
that we, once we get better at, we are bringing these improved skills to the communities that we interact with. So Kyle with customer service, the quality of events run, the rules knowledge, community building. A few people typing, I'll give it another 10 seconds or so. <laughs> Getting away from your kids for a few hours is valuable, definitely. Uh, helping new players and increasing the player base. Being a regular or recognizable face. So um, how hard is to misunderstand rather than just understand? Hmm, okay. Um, so yeah, so we're growing in value by increasing our rules and policy knowledge um, so that we're able to answer questions more accurately and more uh, completely. Our logistics ex expertise, so our events are known to be run on time and to be run as efficiently as possible. Our customer service, you know, that we're making sure that when we're coming to an LGS and when that LGS hires us for an event or we're helping out or just being at an event, that we're making the experience better for the customers by being that friendly face, that friendly welcoming face, um, and that we're being friendly and fair as well. Um, and then importance. Um, you know, if we think about amount as a frequency, the value of the skills that we're bringing, what sort of like, how do we become known or what are things we become known for? not just based on what we bring, but what are the things that we are increasing in terms of how people see us? Yeah, our reputation and character being a huge one. Uh, he, you know, I'll know what I've become important to my LGS when they put out table numbers without me asking. So sort of uh, having that back and forth of, yes, we bring services to the, our LGSs, but also our LGSs return that favor and make things more amiable for us, amicable. Um, it really comes to our reputation a lot of time as well. Um, you know, whether that our reputation and character, but you know, whether that's because you're advancing a level as an L2 or an L3, or you're that friendly face within your community, your LGS. And when you show up, people know that you're the one who has the answer to their questions, who's going to answer it in a way that they understand. You're going to be the one that uh, people are looking forward to seeing at your event because they know the event's going to be better for you being there. And they're going to start to reach out to you. And, um, you know, some of that is you expressing yourself to, you know, an LGS you've never worked before, but sometimes you'll get a call out of the blue and say, hey, we're running an event soon and we want to know more about how we should be doing this. And we hear that you're the person to talk to about it. Um, so that importance, that reputation that you're growing as a judge is a huge part of the growth part of how we grow from a lowly judge to a more experienced one. Um, and yeah, that, so that reputation among the players, you know, that the players trust you to get their rulings right and are looking forward to your interactions, your trusted, your reputation among judges, you know, um, Isaac King, I know is here tonight and I know there's times that I'm an event and I have what I consider to be a weird or off the wall question. I'm like, well, I, if I go to anyone, I know I'll get, you know, the most concrete answer from Isaac, so I'll go to him. Um, and then among LGSs, TOs as well, like I said, you know, we are uh, trying to make our, you know, our communities better in general. And by paying, doing that, you know, those LGSs and TOs will realize, oh, you know, Chris is the person I reach out for when I want to have a great learning opportunity happening at my event or um, things like that. So our increasing our reputation and our trust among our players is a huge part of how we grow from Oh, well, that person took the test online to, I've seen that person interact with our players and they bring value to our event by being there. So we want to keep them around. <clears throat> so if this slide, if we were sort of focusing on like the benefits of us growing as judges and how we measure the metrics for our growth, let's talk about some of the things that judges do to grow, to increase their experience, to become more reputable, to um increase their rules knowledge and policy knowledge what are the things that uh judges do um sometimes intentionally sometimes maybe less intentionally but i guess focusing on intentionality 
that judges would do to increase their skills, to increase their reputation, um, and increase their skill in general as they're trying to grow as a judge. So we have conferences like these, Judge Academy courses, providing customer service, um, being at tournaments, you know, doing the thing. Setting goals for each event, that's a great one. Going into events with a mindset of saying, not only am I going to work this event, but I'm going to get something out of working this event myself. I'm going to, you know, focus on our policy that I feel weak on. Um, judging tournaments, finding a mentor, you know, having someone that you can run questions by or really debrief afterwards to let you know. Playing magic itself. Um, Elliot Rath, uh, <laughs> about a week ago, uh, Carmen decided that uh, she was going to try to tw set Twitter on fire by saying, post your bad takes or your unpopular takes related to magic. And Elliot's, Elliot Raff, uh, L3 out of the Northeast said, I believe judges should play more events. Um, just because um, there are some of us that may focus so much on judging that we forget what it feels like to be a player sometimes. So, you know, sometimes intentionally stepping away from judging for an event or two, letting someone else take the experience and letting someone else grow, but yourself putting yourself physically in those players' shoes so that you can remember what it feels like when a round goes long from a player's side, what it feels like to have to appeal a call, what it feels like when you feel as though a judge call isn't focused on your side of the table enough and things like that. Um, not saying that the judges that are working or that wouldn't be doing everything right, but just as a reminder of saying, oh yeah, this is what it feels like to be answering questions to the head judge when there's an investigation going on. Um, okay, and failing, learning from mistakes. Being a mentor helps you learn as well. Teaching is one of the best ways to really uh, cement learning in your brain as well. Uh, building communities outside magic with other judges and players, <laughs> like playing D&D in Pennsylvania while you're moving is running a cop. That's definitely a great one. Um, and for these, the example, you know, the examples that you all said were excellent. Um, and the ones that I had said as well, I sort of referenced back to the players. Um, this are a lot of the same things as what was on the player side, you know, going to the events and performing in the events and, you know, seeing the results firsthand, reading, um, whether that's reading a judge blog post, watching um, other judges, observing other judges, as Joaquin points out, listening to podcasts. For judging, there's a lot fewer, Judge Cast being the main one I can think of, but I've learned a lot of good things. Um, Dan Gillison, who's presenting tomorrow, uh, one of the last events I worked in California as a floor judge from him, and an interaction came up that I only knew because I was listening to Judge Cast the week before. And he looks at me, he's like, how did you know this as an L1? I'm like, that Brian Pillman guy, he knows what he's talking about. Um, asking questions, creating content, call testing. Um, so I know that uh, I think last week in the West region, y'all had a mock tournament, and I hope that many of you got to go to that. I know that while I was in California, one of the very first mock tournaments I got to do in LA, and that was definitely the thing that set me from being terrified of ever judging a competitive REL event to being the person who said, I want to be judging our competitive REL events, and I want to get to the point where I am comfortable being at these type of events because they're so much fun. Um, so whether that's a formal thing like that, or if you have a mentor or a few experienced players to help you out, but taking practice calls to get you more comfortable while there's less on the line that you're not worried as much about the actual result of your calls. Um, developing judging groups, um, you know, whether that is going to be um, whether that is something that you are jumping into an existing group like a Slack or a Facebook group that exists, or if you have a couple of local L1s and um, some L2s that you consider close friends with each other and that you can ask your questions that you may be too nervous to post to the whole Judge Academy Discord and things like that, whether those are opinions and philosophy or rules questions that you, um, you know, just need a little bit of refresher or reminder of how an interaction works. Having those close groups that will have someone knowledgeable before you reach out to tweeting at Just Dunks or posting to all of Judge Academy what's going on in your call um, can just help you have that resource there. And reviewing past events and calls. 
Um, yeah, some people uh, talking about do do um, mock tournaments. And like I said, I, I think conferences in general and getting the chance to learn and listen, you know, the reading, watching, listening, asking questions is a huge part to developing some of the knowledge related to judging. But in terms of, you know, if you're able to get together for an afternoon with half a dozen judges and run through some mock judge calls that each of you comes up with, or if it's a more formal thing where you've got, um, you know, four rounds of Swiss and team structure set up and things like that. Um, I know Judge Academy, uh, Daniel Lee, and I think it was Jonah, um, did a talk, an hour long talk at the start of March, I think, where they went over all the details that they went into with the mock tournament back in 2017 or so. Um, but that's one of the best things to just be able to say, okay, like, yes, I messed up calls, but I'm learning in a space that I'm not affecting players because I know, at least from my side, how stressful it was taking calls when players' money was on the line, essentially. So mock tournaments are one of my favorite things to get to learn and grow. Okay, so judges, we grow by playing, we grow by judging, we grow by doing all these things, very similar to how players interact with uh, how they improve in their game. And then finally, you know, as we sort of focus on these three uh, components, you know, we're focusing on the amount that growth is growing. We're focusing on the amount of the value of that growth. And we're focused on how important or sort of how our reputation is growing um, as we become more known as a player, as we become more known as a judge. Our communities that we play in they're hoping to grow in a lot of the same ways. And their growth is in a lot of ways an aggregate or a combination of our growth as players. As your players grow and attend more events and play in bigger events, as your judges are looking for more experiences and judging at more events, your community will grow as well naturally, but there's things that your community is going to focus on specifically. So if we were to sort of go through those same metrics again, so this is really the metrics of everything. What are sort of the metrics that a, a store or a local community, you know, whether that's a large metropolitan area or a region of a state, when you're thinking about your magic community, what are some of the metrics that they're looking at to measure the amount of their growth? Yeah, so number of competitors, whether that's regular, so, you know, they're, you know, Friday night crew that shows up every time, or they're one-time competitors that come in from out of town because they hear about how sweet the events are. Um, the number of tournaments that launch, increase attendance, the size of their events, <laughs> size of their events in all caps, because you know that's super exciting. Um, the variety of events, pre-release head counts, and a lot of that as well, you know, goes into the metrics um, and the measurements that Wizards uses to determine how much pre-release allocation they get in the future as well. Their sales, their business, they want to make money. Uh, players talking positively about event experiences. We'll come back to that in um, reputation sort of or experience. Um, now judges, so you know, having more judges apply than what you need is a great problem to have. Uh, community interactions over Discord and turnout of players to events. Um, and the end of the day, you know, sort of going for X times Y, if you think about your frequency of events of X and the number of players that you get at each one is Y, if X times Y equals Z, and you want your Z just to be as big as possible, that's sort of the amount that we're looking at. A lot of those other things, super important. All those things, super important. Everything referenced in the Discord chat. Um, but a lot of these, you know, increasing the frequency of events, knowing that we can run, you know, F and M, but then also have a big event on Saturday, and we have weekly events that regulars are showing up to throughout the week. Um, you know, leads to more players, more butts and seats, more people buying things at their store, and then just more people engaging and growing as players and growing as friends. Um, next would be value. You know, when we um, value sort of as we looked at the player and the judge slides, we're sort of their skill, right? The players doing better in events, the judges, us gaining in terms of our knowledge, our skills that we bring to events. Um, value for community, um, you know, sort of is a combination of those as well. The, they want to see more players grow and expand their ranges by attending larger events in other areas. Um, you know, having, you know, 
every store wants to grow their pre-release numbers, wants to grow their weekly FM numbers and things like that. But there's something special about, um, you know, when you know that you've got that carload of players going off to SCG Pittsburgh and that they're showing up and that they're going to see what they can do and they're playing in the big event for the first time. Um, there's something really cool, I mean, whether that's they're going to be repping the shirts of the shop or, um, you know, sleeves or life pads and things like that. You know, that's one thing of advertising and growing their brand as a store and their notoriety, but just also just knowing that those players are growing and getting to um, have more experiences and all of that being focused and centered around the community that they grew is sort of like watching your, you know, watching your kids grow up and decide to go to college and, you know, sort of seeing them grow and expand their experiences as well because of the positive experiences they have at your store that they want, you know, to grow and increase their skills players. Yeah, smoothness events, having fewer issues per event, more positive experiences. Yeah, that they want to um, increase the value that they're giving to players who show up as well, that players, you know, we we are a luxury market when we think about magic as a game you know there's so many other things that our players can be doing with their time on friday nights there's so many things they could be doing with their money other than spending it on all art foil streets new competitive bootlegger stashes like there's so many things they could be doing with that so you know giving them the best value of the experience when they come to the shop or come to the store so that they are valuing that time as well and growing from being there is a huge thing. And then importance as well, and I sort of reference this a little bit as well on the last one, but becoming a community that's known for the good reasons, right? Um, you know, every day, every week, there's some post on Reddit about a store that did something wrong. Um, more often or less than that, uh, we want our stores, we want our communities to have, <laughs> we want to have the good stories about them, you know, if someone's stuff becomes lost, that someone posts a thank you, that someone turn in, that they were able to get it back to them, um, that players are wanting to come to your store from others, uh, from other areas, from other states for your events, because they hear such good things, sort of as people were saying before, about the events being run smoothly. And because whether it's the prize support that's good or the judges running the events are making it a fun experience, you know, if they're having, you know, the mini games during FNM and trivia that people might say, hey, I'm willing to go out of my way to go to that store because I've heard that they, you know, I know that they run the events in the way that they um, really enjoy. Um, increasing the value and increasing the importance of that store and reaching out to players from other areas. And judges power to growth. Okay, so uh, and communities grow in a lot of different ways. So, yeah, canceling words during a buyout, nothing that stores want to be called attention to. All right, so real, so with that, We've sort of talked about how we measure our growth, how we measure our growth as players, how players are constantly looking to improve, how judges are looking to improve themselves, how stores are measuring and growing themselves as well. Um, our next sort of focus is going to be on approaching that growth mindset in different ways. Thank you, Nikki. Um, so what does a judge's pattern of growth look like? So real quick, I want you to take a moment and think about your personal journey with magic and where did you start your journey? You know, like for me, I remember <laughs> in third grade not being allowed to play and trading my Pokemon cards for magic cards on the back of the school bus, but then actually starting to play in college when my friend brought his shoebox of magic cards from high school to him in college, my college roommate, and we started playing together. So as a lot of us, we probably started our journey as a player, you know, whether it was because our friends were playing at school, um, seeing a theme deck at the Watsy store at the local mall, uh, fourth grade at recess, middle school during lunch, lunch table every day into your high. But yeah, we all started most likely as a player. Um, it's rare that someone would look at things and say, I want to be a judge for a game I've never played before. So a lot of us, we started as a player. And when we started as a player, 
we were probably not as good as we are now, you know, uh, whether that's because we didn't know the rules as well, or we didn't know the strategy behind the game. Um, but we, you know, were told some half full explanations of how the game works by our friends who probably also didn't uh, know the game as well as us, uh, as we do now. Uh, Okay, flesh and blood says a few of us are learn to be flesh and blood judges without playing it. And that is true for me as well for those parts. Um, but yeah, in if Magic was our first game at least, our first exposure to card games, um, you know, our first exposure was probably as a player. But then as well, at a certain point, something clicked or something um registered where you had said, Hey, uh, I've seen all those people who are working in the events themselves, who are uh, you know, having that chance to make the events better for all these players there. Um, I know for myself, I remember uh, my head judge at my local store, Dave Flagg, um, who won my first events. I got two buys in the same four round draft and he came over and he squad down next to me. He's like, hey, I realize having two buys during the same night is not something that should happen. And it's not something that uh, most players would look forward to. So here's a pick of, you know, pre-release promos from last week that we have, um, you know, any of them are yours. And I just remember like being like, okay, I'm here as a player, but someday I want to be the person that gets to be the one who goes around and makes the event run and makes the event better for the people who are there. And then as well, um, sort of as a member of your community, one of the things that I love about Magic personally, as when people ask me why I like this game as much as I do, is that there are just so many ways to engage in it. You know, we've talked about as a player, which everyone, just about everyone who engages with Magic, at least at some point, engages as a player. And we are all here engaging as judges. But then as a member of your community, you know, whether that's cosplayers, content creators, vendors, artists, there's just so many ways that uh, people get pulled in and say, hey, not only do we want you, you know, not only are you interested in playing this game, but here is how you're adding value into your community um, of being part of the game of Magic. Or here's how you're engaging in a way that gets something back for you that's not necessarily FNM prize packs or things like that. I'm just reading through Discord chat. Now, as we, you know, are thinking about our each individual path through Magic, um, you know, we all started some amount of time ago. Uh, for me, just to let you know, I started playing in 2012. So I'm right at my 10-year mark worth of playing. So as a player, you know, where am I currently as a player? You know, I'm 10 years past where I was uh, when I started. So, um, you know, recounting, you know, the number of PPTQs that I've started to play in, um, getting to attend GPs and Opens as a player, getting to try to qualify for the Pro Tour and online events that have those higher uh, prize caps and things like that, um, you know, is so far beyond what I thought I'd be when I first started playing a game because I thought it would be a cool thing to do every other Friday. And then as a judge, you know, whether, you know, from the moment that we first said, hey, I am interested in being a judge because I see that person interacting and growing those events. How do I do that? To the point you are now, whether you're serving as a leadership role at organizing conferences, you're an L2, um, you're an experienced L1, or you're just, you know, have your feet underneath you as an L1 recently. But all these things, you are more, you are farther along right now than what you were when you got started as a judge. And same thing as a member of your community, uh, for anyone who is spent time, you are farther right now than you were before. And I guess um, as well, as we start to think about our growth mindsets, um, not only do we want to focus on where we've been and where we are and focus on the fact that we have changed from where we started to where we are, but if we want to continue to grow, we have to have goals or plans or ideas of where what we hope to accomplish as we're going further. So as a player, you know, like I mentioned with the recent organized play announcement, man, do I want to get back to the Pro Tour? 
Um, you know, man, do I want to qualify for the pro tour someday and get to travel to an event and play with those higher stakes on the line and things like that. As many of our local players probably have those aspirations as well and are looking forward to those events. As a judge, you know, sort of as I shared with y'all at the start of the day, I'm an L2. I'd love someday to be an L3. Um, I'd love someday to work the pro tour. Um, this coming weekend in Pittsburgh, I'm registering for SCG for the first time. And, um, you know, that's a uh, short, short term goal. But all these goals are things that we are focused on growing in terms of needing to wanting to have an impact or wanting to grow as a member of our community as well, that we have these future looking goals in mind to know that in order to reach the goals that we have in the future, if we focus on where we were as a judge when we first got started, back then we were not good enough to do what we want to do now, but that's because growth is possible and because we've all been growing since the time that we started. And a lot of things I'm talking about are, are sort of like bigger event aspirational, but just um, as people are posting in Discord, I want, you know, all the local things are super important as well. Um, you know, Alex saying the, wanting to give back to your community and uh, Urkel, um, you know, starting a club at your school and being able to provide the students with a real term experience and accurate rules knowledge of um, being able to start something new, not just continue things, but start something new and, you know, seeing the need for change within your community and for your community to grow, knowing, oh, I don't have the skills right now to be able to enact that change that I want to see in my community. So these are things I need to focus on and learn and grow to be able to do the things that I want to do. So as we think about this, we can think about where we've been, where we are right now, what our goals are, and see that we should have, you know, an increasing slope, a timeline of how we're growing as a judge to get to where we want to be. And that growth is something that's not only important and valuable, but something that's ever present. All right. So in a lot of cases, as well with this, to really get to the brunt of the growth mindset and um, to get to some of the psychological things, you know, an example of a judge's pattern of growth, it might look like we start working more events because we get certified, we're excited, we uh, start doing the thing where we start going to more events because we want to apply our knowledge we start to take more calls because we're there at events and we're increasing the amount of calls we're taking. We're interacting with more players. We interact with more players. We become more known. They start to trust us. They start to you know, listen to us and look forward to seeing us and recognize our faces. Uh, we might get selected to head judge an event. You know, we're being considered for leadership roles. We're getting selected for um, different opportunities. We might make L2 or we get recognized for a great accomplishment. We've made, you know, our club at our local school or, you know, we are uh, responsible for helping to grow our LGS's pre-releases to the largest they've ever been. And then we mess up in some way. So growth is great. And growth is important and valuable and something that we always have to be improving and increasing our skills and increasing our accolades. But the other thing about growth is that at some point we start to mess up in some ways. And that's not a bad thing. It's just part of stretching ourselves to new challenges. So what happens when things go wrong? We're going to mess up. That's just the thing. If we never push ourselves to go to bigger events, if we never push ourselves to um, reach out to new players or interact with new, um, new players that we haven't interacted with before, we won't have those mistakes, but we also aren't growing. We also aren't going to be doing um, the things that make our communities better. Uh, if you never make a mistake as a judge, you aren't pushing yourself as much as you can do. But then we mess up and we have to fix those mistakes in some ways. And we have to be able to grow from those mistakes and be able to learn from them. So that's where it comes to uh, the growth mindset that's referenced in the presentation title. 
Um, so Carol Dweck, as a few people in Discord have posted her name, wondering if we were going to get to her eventually, we are, uh, was a psychologist that was focused largely on children learning behavior and patterns. So uh, sort of as a descriptor, a growth mindset is believing your talents can be developed Believing that your talents can be developed will let you achieve more than someone who has a fixed mindset, believing that your talents cannot be improved upon from where they are right now. So as a quote from her book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, uh, what are the consequences of thinking that your intelligence or personality is something you can develop as opposed to something that is a fixed, deep-seated trait? Um, so, we're going to sort of compare what it looks like to have a growth mindset, which is our goal and a really admirable thing, versus having a fixed mindset. And a large part of that is in the language we use to discuss ourselves, in the language we use to discuss our successes and failures when we're doing things. So, for example, if we get a question at FNM from a new player, and we don't know the answer to it. That happens, that we don't know a rules question, that we don't know the answer to a policy question. Uh, a fix, someone with a fixed mindset might say, I don't know the answer to that. And I might never be able to really learn it because I don't know it right now. I, why, if I don't know it now, how am I gonna know it in the future? Whereas approaching it from a growth mindset would say, I don't know the answer to that yet, but I'm gonna figure it out and I'm gonna make sure that I can apply it in the future better. You know, going to an event or, you know, thinking about going to an event that is bigger than what you're experienced with, a fixed mindset might say, I'm not good enough to do that. And right now you might not be, and that's true. But looking at it from a growth mindset of saying, I'm not good enough to do that yet. You know, right now, I don't have the skills to work that event, but I can put in the work and effort to be able to grow and get to the point where I can go to that big event and do the big thing. You know, think about tests. One of the ways that we assess growth or, you know, when we're trying to advance judge levels, I failed that test. You know, I failed that L2 test. I'm never going to make L2 versus I failed that test, but I'll do better on the next test. Um, Isaac posts a really good thing too that I want to make sure that everyone reads and something that I don't think that I touched as well as I should have on the presentation thinking about things. Um, but he says the positive effects of growth mindset don't come from belief, but rather from action. It's not about reassuring yourself over and over. I can do this. It's about persevering through a hard problem rather than giving up when it first becomes challenging. And that's something as well that um, not so much always saying, I don't know the answer to that, but it's saying, I don't know the answer to that yet, but I can put in the work to find the answer. Or I'm not good enough to do that yet, but I can put in the work and I can make myself grow by putting in the work and becoming better. So it's not thinking you can, it's thinking that you could, as Mark says. Um, West Governors University, if I remember that WGU acronym right, um, has a few steps to take to developing a growth mindset. And I thought these were really good. So the first one is to listen to the mindset voice inside you. Um, just going through some of those examples just now, you know, thinking about the difference between saying, you know, I'm not good enough to do this versus I'm not good enough to do that yet. And right now, it might be a thing where you have to grow your growth mindset, right? Not only do you have to grow yourself as a skill, you have to find the ability to say, yes, I can grow myself. Yes, I can change how I think about things to be able to grow in the future as well. So you have to know that you it's sort of like, you can't get, have someone help themselves until they want to help themselves, or you can't help someone help themselves until they want to help themselves. And the same thing here, we can't grow as a judge or as a person in general until we believe that we can grow. Um, in fact, when recognize that you have a choice, um, you know, having that power, um, talk back with the growth mindset. So start to apply some of those um, I'm not good enough to do this yet. I didn't do well on that test, but there'll be another one. I will do better next time. You know, thinking about not the results, you know, if I take a test today, the results of this test aren't what matters, but the results of what I do with that knowledge 
of how I do on that test and apply that going forward, what I apply going forward is more important than what I did on that particular test. Um, practice, um, you know, whether that's practicing the skills that you're working on or that's a big part of it. Uh, finding outside help to be able to have that mentor, have that positive voice to be able to help you out. Um, uh, turning an assessment of learning into an assessment for learning, as Nat says. Um, you know, we're, we are not fixed in, just like we said, as we we're comparing our, where we started as a judge to where we are as a judge to where our goal is to be as a judge. We experience from before to now that we've grown. And if we've grown from before to now, that means from now to the future is a chance for growth as well. So as we're practicing and finding outside help and mentorship, that we have those opportunities to continue to grow and reminding ourselves that we will continue to grow if we push ourselves to continue to grow and seek those opportunities. Um, stop seeking approval of others. So finding outside help is like it says, you know, finding a mentor to tell you, hey, when I have this issue, I need advice of how to deal with this and getting that help versus stop seeking the approval of others. It's not that, sort of like if we, the approval of others is very similar to the test example of saying, my goal isn't to pass this test right now. My goal is to develop the skills such that when I take this test, I will do well enough. And we're focusing on our skills as opposed to the assessment itself. And whether that's from the approval of others or um, the test results, but as we grow, and sort of, um, you know, referencing a magic player mindset of results oriented thinking that while it's great to be able to look at your match history and say, oh, I went 4-0, I must be really good at this game. It's more, I went 4-0 as a result of the fact that I'm getting better at this game because I took the right lines of play, because I did the things and they came out the right way. A player can go 1-3 over the course of the night, but could have still played their best. And having that results-oriented thinking is what players fall into sometimes to say, oh, my results are what matters, but really it's the skill and the application of our skill when we come to the game. And it's the same thing with judging. That's more important that we are bringing our skills and improving and focusing on our skills as opposed to focusing on each individual event that we're assessing ourselves. Uh, replace the word failing with learning. I failed this L2P versus I learned from this. I didn't do well in this L2P. I learned what I need to do better for next time. And then finally, we want to take that growth mindset action of applying and putting in the work that we're going to start to grow ourselves in order to improve our performance for the future so that our skills improve and that we're going to get to the point where that's a lot worse from Quinn. I'll try to read that at some point soon and give feedback on that. Okay. Um, so sort of just some back and forth in terms of what it sounds like to have a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset for players, for judges, for a community, we're gonna focus on some of those as well. Um, oh, okay, so uh, Quinn is, um, Quinn, I'm reading through yours real fast, Quinn. One thing as well as um, the difference between finding outside help and seeking approval of others, um, having others assess you from the outside is also really good in terms of um, being able to measure you from where you were to where you are, because so much of our change and so much of our growth is piecemeal and um, incremental that it's hard for us ourselves to be able to realize that we are making larger bounds and larger improvements than we realize, because you, do, you don't see the progress yourself as much as others might see it when they see you less frequently, essentially. Um, and not to say that it's like, oh, I haven't seen Clay in three years. When we see each other, both of us have grown a lot and we should not see each other again for three years so that we both have three years worth of growth to talk about. But in terms of if you're every day saying, why am I not 
better than I was before. But yeah. Um, or, okay, and you can improve and grow without realizing sometimes as well. Um, yeah, thank you for that, Quinn. Um, okay, so with about 10 minutes left, sort of going back, going through a few ways that this might vocalize itself in terms of players, judges, and communities that are, um, that is how it might be expressed as a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. Um, so a player who might be disappointed in their performance at an event, you know, if they have a fixed mindset, they might say, I guess I'm not good enough to compete at this level. You know, maybe it's their first time going to a PPTQ or a regional qualifier coming up and they don't do as well as they wish they would have. Uh, if they have a fixed mindset, they might say, I'm not good enough to compete at this level and might not go to another event again of that size. Whereas a player with a growth mindset might say, I have a lot to focus on before going to my next event. I need to improve my skills in these ways um, before I'm going to take this risk of going to this event again or this type of event again. Or, you know, a big thing for players is being able to make a good decision before going to the event with what deck they're planning on playing. So, um, you know, they might show up and say, um, that they think that their deck is really great and their deck just has bad matchups all day. And they say, my preferred deck isn't good enough for the format right now. Modern Horizons 2 just changed too much about modern. Um, or a growth mindset saying, hey, I have my preferred deck, but maybe I can learn a new deck before my next event happens so that I'll be more prepared. For judges, we um, have a lot of different ways that we make mistakes sometimes and that we have to recover from them. And whether we apply a fixed mindset or a growth mindset to it, um, it's going to be uh, influenced in terms of how we maybe continue or grow in terms of our judging. So we mess up a call, you know, we get covered a table, we mess up a call, it gets corrected, maybe in the moment, maybe afterwards we realize we messed it up. But, you know, a fixed mindset, man, I messed up that call because I don't know the rules well enough. And, you know, maybe I shouldn't be judging at big events because I messed up that call and I don't want to mess up again. Versus a growth mindset, that was a place I was lacking in knowledge in, but this experience helped me grow that part of the rules going forward. And I'm going to be less likely to make a mistake related to extra land drops and Azusa leaving the battlefield than I did before. Or failing your LTP. This one is one that strikes me because like, I remember it really well, um, you know, well, if I have a fixed mindset, if I fail my L2P, how, I'm never going to pass and make my L2. Or a growth mindset of, now I know what areas I need to focus on to make a push for L2 in the future. Because going to my first L2P, I thought I knew all the rules. And then my first L2P taught me, I do not, by any means, know the rules as well as I thought I did. And really made me focus on the things I need to grow in. Oh, uh, this was an example from Reddit that just happened over pre-release weekend. Um, but the the poster uh, is a, from what I understand, relatively new L1 to their area. And they had a pre-release event that they were head judging for the first time. And they did not do as well as they thought they would do. They had about four or five calls that they messed up that were corrected by players in some way. And they posted to Reddit and were feeling very down about themselves and looking for advice of how to proceed or whether to proceed. And this um, other judge's response, I tried making stir fry and it didn't go well. I read the recipe, but still made errors. Stuff I should have known, like how long to cook the vegetables. I feel like such a failure. I don't think I should cook anymore. I had to stop eating a meal I was eating, not making, because I dropped my spoon. I'm home now feeling sorry for myself. So sort of the same thing is, hey, things didn't go well. What would your advice be to them for cooking? You know, to give up and never cook in or try again for perhaps with a new recipe. And, you know, like they say here, if every judge quit when they made four wrong calls, there wouldn't be anyone left, not even L3s. Judges are not infallible, no more than the principles. So this person just, their posts encapsulated just so much of what this presentation's goal was to be about that what I saw yesterday, I just wanna include this particular person's response because I liked it a lot. Um, just a few more slides and then we'll have a few moments towards the end. 
Um, so, you know, not getting accepted for an event or leadership role as a judge, uh, you know, oh, this TO doesn't like me and I'm never going to get a chance to work for them. Versus I could ask for help in writing my cover letter next time and reach out to see if there are areas I need improvement to be considered. Um, you know, they had a reason for not hiring, not selecting me. And maybe that's just strength of other applicants or things like that. But how do I need to grow to get to the point where they will hire me? Or what needs to be different for the future? Uh, having a disagreement with a TO or fellow staff member, me and that TO or judge will never get along versus we've had disagreements in the past. What are things we can do to improve our relationship? We'll probably see each other at future events. We should try to improve our relationship. Or um, you're a team lead and you, your directions aren't being followed or carried out how you want them to be. My team never follows the directions I give them. Versus what can I do differently to communicate effectively with my team and have our tasks completed in the way I would like them to be? And then for communities as well, you know, having a growth mindset is something that's super important as well. You know, your pre-release this past week had reduced attendance compared to what it used to be. I guess players don't want to come out to magic events anymore versus our events haven't been seeing as many players. What should we change about our events to attract more players? You know, realizing that what you've been doing, what you are doing, isn't what you have to continue to be doing. You can change things about how you're applying yourself, whether that's as a judge or as a community, um, to be able to do better in the future. And having that growth approach of putting in that effort to change things is going to hopefully lead to an increase, in this case, in attendance for those community events. So in conclusion, I just want to let people know um, that we have opportunities to grow every day. We will experience the successes and we'll also experience failures. And we need to approach both with a growth mindset. Um, and that's, as many people have pointed out, you know, in terms of focusing on um, the effort that we put in and focusing on the fact that we can put effort into ourselves to be able to change our skills, to be able to change our behavior and increase our value um, to overcome the failures and lead to more successes going forward. Um, and that's what all I have for tonight. Um, it looks like it's 958. I know we have about two minutes left. Um, so uh, there's been a lot of uh, great comments in the Discord channel. I really appreciate everyone for sharing their thoughts on growth mindset or their experiences when it came to running into mistakes or um, the difficulties that you come into in terms of um, roadblocks that we hit as we're judging and things like that. Um, so I really appreciate everyone's um, attendance and everyone contributing in the ways that they have over the course of the next hour or of the past hour. Um, I know that we've got a break coming up. I'm sure that Nikki or Chris will explain everything, but that we'll be hearing from Nat as well in about 15 minutes. But I really want to, uh, like I said, once again, uh, thank you all for um, being part of this session tonight.